In the dimly lit chambers of the American Congress, the echoes of a nation in turmoil resonated through the halls. The year was 1865, and the Civil War, a conflict that had torn the nation apart, was drawing to a close. The air was thick with the scent of gunpowder and the bitter taste of division. Yet, amidst the chaos, two voices rose above the din, calling for a radical transformation that would redefine the very fabric of American society. These voices belonged to Thaddeus Stevens and Charles Sumner, two men who, despite their differences, shared a common vision, the creation of a truly democratic and just society where all men, regardless of race, could participate equally. Thaddeus Stevens, a man of stern resolve and unyielding principles, stood before his fellow lawmakers with a proposal that seemed almost unthinkable at the time. He argued that the entire social and economic structure of the South must be dismantled and rebuilt from the ground up. Stevens, a Republican from Pennsylvania, was not a man to mince words. He spoke with a clarity and directness that cut through the political rhetoric of his time. He saw the root of the South's problems in its feudalistic land ownership system, where a small elite class of landowners, often referred to as nabobs, held vast swaths of land while the majority of the population, both black and white, lived in poverty and oppression. Stevens proposed a radical solution, the confiscation of land owned by the wealthiest Southerners and its redistribution to the freed slaves and poor whites. His plan was simple yet ambitious. He suggested that the government should seize the 394 million acres of land owned by 70,000 individuals, each of whom possessed more than 200 acres. From this land, 40 million acres would be given to adult freedmen, with each receiving 40 acres. The remaining 354 million acres would be divided into smaller, manageable farms and sold to the highest bidder. The proceeds from these sales, estimated at $3.54 billion, would be used to fund pensions for veterans, compensate loyal citizens for war damages, and pay off the national debt. Stevens's proposal was not just about economic reform, it was about creating a new social order. He envisioned a South where the old hierarchies of power and privilege were dismantled, and a new, more egalitarian society could emerge. He argued that the landowners who had orchestrated the rebellion and brought the nation to the brink of destruction should be made to pay for their crimes. By redistributing their land, Stevens believed that the South could be transformed into a region where all citizens, regardless of race, could participate in the political and economic life of the nation. However, Stevens's plan was met with fierce opposition. Many in Congress, particularly those from the South, saw it as a form of punishment and a violation of property rights. They argued that such a drastic measure would only deepen the wounds of the war and further alienate the South from the Union. Yet Stevens remained undeterred. He believed that the only way to achieve lasting peace and reconciliation was to address the underlying economic and social inequalities that had fueled the conflict. While Stevens was the architect of this radical economic plan, Charles Sumner, a senator from Massachusetts, was the voice of moral and legal justification. Sumner, a prominent abolitionist, had long advocated for the rights of African Americans. He saw the end of the Civil War not just as a military victory, but as an opportunity to create a new, more just society. Sumner's speeches were filled with a deep sense of moral urgency, drawing on the principles of the Constitution and the founding ideals of the nation. Sumner began his plea by emphasizing the importance of equal suffrage. He argued that the right to vote was not just a privilege, but a fundamental right that should be extended to all citizens, regardless of race. He pointed out that the population of the South, which had just emerged from the horrors of slavery, was now being denied the most basic of democratic rights. The 5,447,222 whites in the 11 Confederate states were to be enfranchised while the 3,666,110 formerly enslaved individuals were to be left without a voice in the government that would govern them. Sumner saw this as a grave injustice, one that violated the very principles of the Constitution and the promises made by the nation's founders. Sumner's argument was rooted in the principle of taxation without representation, a rallying cry that had once united the colonies against British rule. He pointed out that the freedmen, who now outnumbered the entire population of the colonies at the time of the American Revolution, were being subjected to a grinding taxation 
through tariffs and excise duties. Yet they were denied any say in how those taxes were levied or spent. This, Sumner argued, was a form of tyranny that was as unjust as the one the Founding Fathers had fought against. Sumner also emphasized the educational and develop mental benefits of enfranchisement. He believed that the ballot was a powerful tool for social and political education. By giving the freedmen the right to vote, he argued, the government could help them learn the principles of democracy and become more engaged and informed citizens. This, in turn, would contribute to the overall stability and prosperity of the nation. Sumner saw the ballot as a schoolmaster, capable of teaching the values of manhood and citizenship, especially to a people whose dignity and humanity had been systematically denied. However, Sumner was not blind to the practical challenges of universal suffrage. He acknowledged that certain restrictions, such as age, character, registration, and residence, might be necessary to ensure the integrity of the electoral process. These restrictions, he argued, should be applied equally to all citizens and should not be used to disenfranchise any particular group. Sumner's vision of universal suffrage was one where all citizens, regardless of race, could participate equally in the democratic process. Sumner's plea was not just for the freedmen, but for the nation as a whole. He argued that the enfranchisement of the freedmen was essential for the long-term stability and prosperity of the country. He warned that without equal rights, the South would remain a region of unrest and instability, a breeding ground for resentment and conflict. By granting the freedmen the right to vote, Sumner believed that the nation could begin to heal the wounds of the war and move towards a more just and equitable society. Sumner's and Stevens's proposals were part of a larger debate over the future of the nation. The end of the Civil War had brought about a moment of profound transformation, a moment when the nation had the opportunity to redefine itself and to live up to its founding ideals. Their ideas, though radical at the time, were rooted in a deep understanding of the social and economic structures that had led to the war and in a commitment to creating a more just and equitable society. However, the road to implementing these ideas was fraught with obstacles. The political climate of the post-war era was marked by deep divisions and intense resistance. Many in the South, including former Confederates who had been pardoned by President Andrew Johnson, were determined to maintain the old social order. They saw the proposals for land redistribution and enfranchisement of the freedmen as a threat to their way of life and their power. The Ku Klux Klan and other white supremacist organizations emerged, using violence and intimidation to keep African Americans from exercising their rights. Despite these challenges, Sumner and Stevens continued to advocate for their ideas. They believed that the nation's future depended on addressing the deep-seated inequalities that had contributed to the Civil War. Their efforts, though not fully realized during their lifetimes, laid the groundwork for the civil rights movement of the 20th century and continue to resonate in the ongoing struggle for racial justice in America. In the end, the legacy of Sumner and Stevens is one of unyielding commitment to the principles of justice and equality. Their vision of a truly democratic society, where all citizens, regardless of race, could participate fully in the political process, remains a powerful ideal. The struggle for equal rights and a more just society continues. But the voices of Sumner and Stevens serve as a reminder that progress is possible when we are willing to confront the injustices of the past and work towards a better future. The echoes of their words still resonate in the halls of Congress and in the hearts of those who believe in the power of democracy to create a more perfect union. The work of redemption, as Sumner put it, is not yet complete, but the path forward is clear, a path of justice, equality, and human dignity.